as I'm working on book two, I'm realizing the need for a story Bible. So let's talk about that. It's I Should Be Writing, season 18, episode 16. Live on Twitch. Recorded later. Well, I should be writing. And hi there, everyone. This is I Should Be Writing, the podcast for wannabe fiction writers, usually science fiction, fantasy, other genres. And I'm your host, Mer Lafferty. This show appears live on Twitch, Tuesday, Thursday, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. And then it is edited and goes out on my podcast feed where you can subscribe pretty much anywhere you find podcasts. And, um, yeah, we talk about writing, we talk about both the emotional side and the uh, technical craft side. My pronouns are she, her, we have fun in the chat, and I think that's it, pretty much. I wrote out a script and then I lost the script. Where's the script? I wanted a script to open and close it so I could make sure to say the same things every time. <laughs> Oh, boy. Sometimes I just wonder if I should embrace the chaos. I've been doing this since 2004, and I'm still not put together before I record. Anyway. Um, how do you record it later if it's live now? Is your recorder a time machine? No, it, it's recorded for release later. So yeah, story of me, I am, um, I got, I, I, I technically got some good writing done today. I have been, um, I redid, as I mentioned last week, I redid my outline, which was great, but in saving some of the scenes that had to be moved around, I obviously have to write what we call connective tissue because you want the scenes to flow into each other and not be weird and non sequitur like. So I had to delete some sentences and add some other sentences and do a lot of writing. And so with the deleting and the adding, the scenes were already there. So those words were already counted. So I, after about three hours of writing, I net, I got net 1,030 words for the day, which is sort of over my word count goal, but it, I worked a lot harder than those 1,000 words. And another thing is I've got a growing suspicion that a lot of what I've written has been necessary and useful backstory that's not going to make it into the book, and so I don't feel like I'm as far along as the, as the word count says I am, which I just don't want to do, you know, I don't actually want to look at it. I don't want to look at how far along I am because that will make me cry when I think about the future. I have until May. But what I was doing when I should have been preparing for my stream was playing with a spreadsheet. So I figured out how to automatically, I don't have to write down and do the math of looking at the word count history in Scrivener. I can just put word count in one cell and then everything else propagates. Is that the word? I'm not sure. Oh, I didn't, I haven't done everything yet. Anyway, so I have, I have my numbers for today. They are, uh, 1,030 net words, and then um, 11,440 for February, and then I have not done the word count in the project-specific area, but that's somewhere around 31,000 words, 
Again, I don't know how many of those I'm going to keep, but I'm very close to killing somebody, and I'm very excited about that, because that was, that was kind of, when you start inching into the 20,000 word area and there's nobody dead yet, it gets a little, it gets a little dicey. I mean, I've learned a lot from Agatha Christie, but I'll say that there's, there's a book called Sleeping Murder which I think it has a clever premise, but it takes far too long for anybody to die because it's about a woman who is in England supposedly for the first time and she buys a house and she knows exactly what kind of house she wants to buy and she finds the perfect house. And every time she says, I think, you know, we should put wallpaper with blue flowers in this room and then you know, they, they take down a piece of the wallpaper and there are blue flowers underneath. And then I think it should have a, a stone patio out here in the garden. And they're like, yeah, we dug up a little bit and there's already a stone patio. They just put sod on top of it. And then she looks through the banister down the stairs and then freaks out because turns it, it takes Miss Marple to figure it out. But it, it turns out to be... She lived in that house as a very young child and saw her mother murdered. And so the mi murder mystery is trying to solve the murder from long ago. Obviously the murderer is still in her life because otherwise that would be, <laughs> that wouldn't be scary at all. And, um, but it just takes so long to establish what's going on. It gets kind of boring. It's a, it's a murder mystery. Of course someone's got to die, and they got to die in the right place. With the right weapon, and the right person, and all that. So anyway, I'm getting way off topic. I'm not quite done with my spreadsheet. Um, I'll probably show it to kids are asleep, and, and she'll have many things to say about how it could be improved. But I'm I'm glad that, that I can keep up with my word count the way I wanted to this year with minimal effort. Because I understand spreadsheets have some capability. A little bit. So yeah, that's that's what I've been working on. I didn't get a lot of work done. Okay, I didn't get any work done over the con. Why I ever think I will is kind of cute, you know? It's kind of cute and naive that I ever think I will get work done. At a con, but I went to Boscone. I did not get work done. I did read from Station Eternity to a small crowd, but an appreciative crowd, so that was good. Did not sign a lot of books, but I knew and liked the person signing beside me, so we hung out. And then, folks, just a thought. I understand money's, money's tight for a lot of people. But there's so many better people to complain to about the high cost of books than the author. And I was sitting next to this guy and a woman walks up to him and she's like, I got bad news. And he's like, what? She's like, your book's coming out in trade paperback. He's like, okay. And she just starts going on about how trade paperbacks cost so much and she can't do it. And she needs to get this used and that, you know, it's, it's like, I, I sympathize, but telling me that you don't want to buy my books is not a good conversation. <laughs> and libraries are great. Love libraries. Love it. Love people finding you in the library and falling in love with your words and you know thinking later on that they want to buy your book if like they have the means they'll think who what books do I know of that I could buy this friend of mine who would love a book you know it's it's and and you know used bookstores are a thing and that's okay that's my best line I've ever said in my life. I'm just saying, I understand the use, the need for all those things. I'm just saying, don't complain to authors about how much their books cost. 
Because unless they're self-pubbing, they can't control it. And really what you're saying is, I wish that I could pay you less money for this thing you're making. Just don't... Yeah. I don't know, under Pope, she was just really mad. You know, trade paperbacks usually end up... Well, no, mass market's smaller. Trade paperbacks... I've got a lot of trade paperbacks in here. Yeah, trust me, it's all the ones right there. Um, but they usually run about $15, $18. And so I think she was mad that trade paperbacks... That there was no mass market, there was a trade paperback of his book. And I was sitting there going, no one's here, no one wants my autograph, I'm getting close to the time, I could leave. And then I thought, I can't leave, I can't leave him with this. And I, did, I didn't know what to say to rescue him, but I figured I would sit with him and just be a friendly presence. And when she finally left... I was like, dude, I almost left, but I had to stay here with you. He's like, thank you. And I said, who thinks it's a good idea to tell authors that they wish their books were cheaper? And he's like, yeah, don't worry. Leave the knife in. It'll bleed less. That, that was his comment. It was very funny. And I know sometimes you don't think about it. Sometimes you don't think about who, how your actions are affecting somebody else and then you complain about it to them. I don't know, like if you're going to Starbucks at 6 a.m. and you talk to a very tired barista and you're like, man, I wish you guys opened up earlier. Anyway. Oh, is mass market only in the U.S.? Okay, I did not know. I don't know, my my books, uh, when Shamley Guides came out in the U.S. and the U.K., the U.K. versions were only slightly smaller. So I don't know. You could give it away for free and they'd still find something to complain about. Yes, I know this from the times that I've podcasted books for free. Yes. Yes. Okay. Moving on. Ah, good news. Um, negative COVID test this morning. So it's a nice feeling to go to cons and come home and not be infected with stuff. We're going to do one more test later on this week, but I think we're both, we, we both feel fine and in the clear. So one more to be safe. And then on, and we got Horizon Zero Dawn. I, pl I started playing it last night. I had to because uh, I didn't have the day off because I'm a freelancer and my husband did. And so he spent most of the day playing it. And then I got to play it last night. I got about three hours in, I think. Um, it's good. The, the art is even better than it was. It's... Um, the faces are unbelievable. We've, like, moved past Uncanny Valley, I think. Some of the... I mean, <laughs> I was very amused at one specific face. It was just an older white guy in a, a robe, in a, a priest robe. And I said, that is an amazing facial animation. And my husband's like, yeah, but his head does not look like it belongs on that body. And I'm like, oh, that's right. It does look like just like a pretend body with a head stuck in. So there are little things to fix, I suppose. But uh, no real writing news, um, except word work keeps going. Actually, I will say one good news. As you know, last year I had a lot of trouble with rewrites. Both my projects needed considerable rewrites, was a big kick to the jaw in, and the self-esteem and confidence and all that. It was all, all bad. And you know, it was, it was COVID, it was working with new, a new agent and uh, new editors. I hadn't, I hadn't worked with either of these editors before. It was all just kind of combined together to, to not be good. And I am feeling much better now. I think the successful release of Godmaker helped. Um, if you enjoy running, then I suggest checking out Zombies Run. You can 
download it for free and get the first two episodes of Godmaker for free, which is the sort of dark fantasy, necromancy running adventure that I wrote for Six to Start. But anyway, that the good response to that really helped with my confidence. But right now, um, so <laughs> that was my long lead up, sorry. I did an outline for book two that my editor approved. And as I'm working on it, I'm a discovery writer. So as I'm working on it, I'm coming up with cool idea here, cool idea here, extra, extra character here is probably going to become a main character. And I'm starting to worry that even though I'm getting much more into it, I worry that I'm changing it too much. And all of my writer friends say they know that it's going to change. I mean, very few people stick to the, the, the outline perfectly. But I still worry because, again, last year, some of the rewrites I had to do were because I'd gone too far from the outline. And granted, I'd gone too far from the outline in a negative way. I mean, the, the story wasn't as good as the one that I had sold with the outline. So that's, that's one thing. But when I started to write down and figure out how I was going to let my editor know this, I was looking at the plot and thinking, wait a minute, all I've done is flesh out B stories and make them much more interesting to where, and, and I kind of just hinted that in the outline. I'm like, okay, here's the B story about these characters and there's going to be a trial and there's going to be, don't worry, boring courtroom dramas are not my jam. I can't even tell you what the trial is about because it's about something that happens in the first book. But it will not be boring, I promise. Anyway, there are going to be some characters on trial and there's going to be, uh, you know, a couple of other weird things going on. The core murder, the people who come to the station and the people who kill the people and the victims, the, that's not really changing. And so I felt a lot better once I realized that I was just doing my job in beefing up the story the way it's supposed to beef up. So um, that's my good news. I was really feeling awkward trying to approach my agent and editor saying, here's how the book's changing without realizing it's not really changing much more than away from my outline. So that's it. Um, so that's my good news. I was once buying a book and it was October and I said, do you have the current famous author now dead in? And he said, yes, we just got it in, but we haven't shelved it. Would you like a copy? I said, yes. And it was trade paperback. I was mad because if I buy a book the day it comes out, I want the damned hardback, but that is not the author's fault. Oh yeah. Getting hardcover. I don't know how that's done. And I'm not sure it's always a good thing. Because sometimes they won't be happy with how the hardcover performs and then they'll put book two in softcover and then, you know, your collectors will be like, why don't these two books match? So that kind of sucks. Good news from Shards. I managed to change the sheets on my bed all by myself for the first time since major wrist surgery. That's awesome. Man, those, those, those everyday things that you take for granted are easy and then... It's taken away from you. It's that that's it's bad. So congratulations. Two rejections since last Thursday. Also coming to the end of my novel draft. Really excited about how it's turning out. Under Pope, you are on fire again. Awesome. Let's see if we can get our uh, rejection number to properly go up. Reject button and reject button. Woo! Forty-four rejections. Awesome. I bought the first few Robert Jordan Wheel of Time books in trade, and they were so popular they went to hardcover. Wow. That's... Wow. May I ask what this is a book two of? This is book two of Station Eternity, which is coming out in October, so this book two will not be out for quite some time. And book one still won't be out for another eight months. And it has a gorgeous cover. Thank you for that segue, Daniel. Uh, where is it? There it is. Ha <laughs> ha. It's gorgeous. So freaking gorgeous. Somebody said on 
Twitter that when I announced the cover that this artist has been so close to a Hugo nomination or Hugo finalist spot, technically, um, like three votes away. So I am really going to be pushing anybody who is nominating this year to consider him because I have not had one person not exclaim something at that book cover. It's like, I don't know what it is. I don't think there's anything unique about it, but something about the things he put on there together and the colors, it's just, it's just gorgeous. It's not a typical science fiction book, but you can tell it's science fiction because there's planets and bugs. So I, I think that might be it. It's gorgeous. It says science fiction, but it's n it, while it's not elements we haven't, it's not elements we haven't seen before. I think they're elements that have not sold science fiction before or much. So I'm, I'm, if you have the power to nominate for the Hugos, then uh, consider Will Stale. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. It's got a lot of vowels. It is on my website, merverse.com. You can find it on my Twitter. It's really easy to find. He might have the kind of name that if you misspell it in Google, it'll still be found. Because if you, like, look up Will, S-T-A-H-A-E-L. See, I've, it's a lot of A's and E's. Even if you misspell it, you might find it if you, like, include artist. But, yes. The designer. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look up his name because I don't want to get it wrong. Oh, thank you, Catwood. Thank you very much. I did Will Sta and it came up. Awesome. Will Stale, S-T-A-E-H-L. We will also, with another E. <laughs> we'll also have it in the show notes if you're listening to this later. Yes. He's done like Michael Cabin books and Victoria Schwab books. It's like I was looking at his portfolio on his uh, Twitter page and there's like, several books that I've, that I, uh, recognized big time. Phased Out has booked two f hotels, flights, and Airbnb covering the time leading up to occurring if and after my wedding of all the waterfowl of, are in a straight line now. That's fantastic. I have been remiss of hitting the yay button this whole time. I don't know why, but I am very sorry. But yay for the wedding and stuff getting in and birthdays, and uh, rejections. Yes. Hooray for all of that. I'm very happy. We're doing good, guys. I think so. Well done being born, Joey. Well done getting married phased out. Well done with the rejections under Pope. We got this. Well done me realizing that I'm not changing my book that much. Right. Boscombe was pretty cool. I got to meet Joey T. Badger in person, which was very cool. Uh, Jim Kelly was there. Jim read from his new book, which I really, really want to read. And it is in beta phase now. So, you know, it's got to go another round of edits after betas read it. And then it's got to go to his agent. And then... Either it comes back from his agent or it goes out to editors. Anyway, it's like, I'll be able to read it in two years, I guess. If in the best case. Um, yes, that's right. He did Echo Wife 2 and The Maidens. Yes, just lots. Staley. Thank you, Catwood. Awesome. Okay, so... This topic actually came up when I was reading um, a podcast newsletter about making a show Bible. And I thought, maybe if I make a show Bible, I will not struggle so much with some of my planning and some of my structure. And as I'm writing, my character at the beginning of book one has witnessed or been close to 18 murders and 
been involved with the solving of 14 and a half. She did not solve the 15th, but she was there, so. But I list some of them out, like how she can't, like, you know, how it messes with her love life. And then I tell the story of the person who tried to propose to her at a basketball game. But when the video goes up on the Jumbotron, they can see the person two rows above them has just been stabbed and is bleeding everywhere. Um, that was a bad, bad proposal and a terrible thing to be memed on Twitter. Memed? Is that a word? You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so I, I remember, I'm trying to, to, to put a little bit of story into these, not every single murder that happened, but I need to know what every single murder is. And I don't. So then I realized, um, I'm also inventing a bunch of aliens and I don't remember a couple of details about them. So I realized I need to make a story Bible and I don't want to because it requires a lot of careful stuff and I'm not careful at all. So I figured I would talk about it here and then we could talk about why you might need one and how to start one. Um, why you might need one is for exactly the reason I said. There's a lot of, if you're going to be writing more than one book, especially if you're going to be writing more than one book, you want to keep track of everything. One thing I've realized as a reader that we read and reread our favorite books while authors are just like, it's done, thank God, get it away from me. And, you know, we'll never read it again. And since we're trying to think up new stories, then it's, it, it, it's what's, we, we don't want that in our brains. We don't want it taking up space. I keep... My assistant is, um, if you've seen art about lots of book cover, lots of my book covers on Twitter or Instagram l lately, that's my assistant doing stuff. And, um, he grabs my very first book, which technically was Playing for Keeps, which was small press published in 07 or 08, somewhere around there. And, um, yeah, I, I keep thinking he should take that off. I can't tell you why. It's it's a book. I wrote it. I don't think it's bad. I was it, it did start the curse of me never being able to continue with the series. Which sucked. Cause I had a lot of plans for that one too. But you know, it, it earned out. People liked it. And I don't know why I want to move away from that. But I keep thinking, you know, just just start with Shambling Guide. That's but he's he's starting, and I I realize that um, even though the the book itself is out of print, you could still buy the ebook. Boy, my publisher was not happy that I kept ebook rights because that was right around the time that you could actually make money selling ebooks, and I'm like, he doesn't want the ebook rights. Oh my god! So I just published the ebook and did pretty well with it. But that's another story. It's funny to say I worry about this because it's really like a good problem to have. But I have worried in the past of somebody wanting, like looking at my backlog and thinking, hey, I'd like to see an, uh, a second book in this series. I don't think this ever happens. But, you know, when I can't think of anything else to worry about, I will make stuff up. And I think I can't remember who is who and what powers they have from playing for keeps. Because I haven't looked at it in a very long time. And <laughs> I'm kind of feeling the same thing with Station Eternity. I um, want to... I need to keep track of everything. And I need to start doing it now. Because if they like book two, then they'll want to... Probably want to book three because that's the contract. And... I will definitely need. I've never written a book three. I've written 
more than one novella, but I've never written a book three of a novel. So I really will be needing a, a Bible. And I'm curious, kids are asleep. Do you have a Bible? Because I know you're either working on three, number three or, or are you already done? Anyway, tell us how you do it. But so I've been making lists of what I need in my story Bible. And I think when you, I'll, I'll go with the works across the board and then needs to be specific to your book. You need um, characters and the spellings of their names and nicknames. If anybody misuses the name and how they look. And if it's a book too, if there's anything that changed from the first one, like a scar or an amputation. But it also matters to do like what your characters wear. It may not, it may not matter to you if like they're all your, from your socioeconomic ethnic background. But, uh, for example, I haven't done a lot with alien fashion in the first book. I did a little bit, but not a lot. And so I don't remember hardly anything. And so when I start describing these characters showing up, I'm like, what are they wearing? I don't even know what this species wears. I forgot. So I'm going to have to go in to the first book and go through and find what they're wearing, what colors they are, their names, ages are good. Especially if it's something long-lived, like aliens, or, or you're using fae. Um, anybody that's traditionally long-lived. But do their clothes have pockets? That is a question. I'm going to wait till book three. Book three to answer. So Tree Lobsters in the chat says, Multi-tab spreadsheet with character species, locations, plot points, beat sheet, con timeline, stats, and things to fix. I may have a spreadsheet problem. I don't know. It's... That's pretty amazing. Yes, a wiki would be cool. I was, um... Tamsin Mir was the guest of honor at Boscone, and I was thinking... She has so much of the popularity level that, that I would love. Like, there's wikis about the Locked Tomb series. Isn't that what it's called? Yeah. There's wikis. There's people making guesses as to some of the mysteries that were half revealed in the second book. Things like that. Song of Ice and Fire has a major wiki. And, uh... But yeah, I need to know about the pockets. What Patreon level gets advanced pocket spoilers? I can add a Patreon level for the advanced pocket spoilers, if you like. We have had Treating the Good Dog redeemed. Good Dog will have to wake up. Oh, no, he is awake. Yeah, you heard me, didn't you? Yes, you did. So, I'm also going to have to have the murders. Which murder happened... And which kind of left a mark on her. Because there were murders that changed, you know, her love life, her family life. They changed her going to school. All of that. I need to do that thing that authors totally always do, which is know more than I'm telling you about some things. I'm not going to tell you what I don't know that I'm just kind of pointing at a little piece of ice from the ice maker and saying, look at that iceberg. Don't you wonder what's underneath there? Yeah, I've got to work out all the underneath stuff. MERS murder database. Yes. I like that. Wait, we need to know more than what we're telling. We'll talk about that later, Shauna. Uh, yeah, you kind of, you need to think, you know, more than is revealed. But, I mean, if you do hold some stuff back and people figure it out, they love that. They absolutely love that. So what else? I think I wrote stuff down, like preparing and crap. 
wrote stuff down as to the story bible wrote it in words that i can read really good handwriting And still, I can't find it. It might be on a post-it. i got to put away the post-its so I don't do that. Anyway, why is it important? It's obvious. Continuity. I think about the things that stick in my mind from other people's books, and, what, and I used to be very naive and wonder why they couldn't think of that either. And like I said earlier, once I don't know about you guys, but once I'm done with something and the final's out and I can throw it away, metaphorically in my mind, then, you know, I want to think about the next book. I don't want to worry about this one anymore. It's out of my hands entirely. And, um, you know, unless I go in and, and it gets to be such a big hit, I get to do the American Gods or Stand thing to it, where I uh, get to do the author's preferred text. And I don't know how to get those files because my record keeping is awful. Yeah, I don't I don't think I'm going to need to go back and revisit the text. But um it is good for quick reference. I think the wiki or spreadsheet idea is excellent and are there going to be philosophical debates over whether the MC is cursed to have people around her be murdered or to be around people who get murdered? Yes, that is going to be debated. It is going to be part of the story of why this happens to her. And you can thank Christiana Ellis for that because I was talking to her. And I said, if I'm hanging a lantern on the fact that this is someone around whom murders happen, just like all our favorite murder shows, only I point it out, do I have to actually solve why? And Christiana's like, yes, you do. So that was a quick and easy conversation that, that I'm grateful for. Because I think the book is a lot better because of it. Yes, that is going to be discussed. And it's coming up again in the second book. But when you think of bringing in the same characters or the same settings, you want to think of map, fashion, injuries, all that stuff. It's, it's all good to keep track of. And if you write it down, then you don't have to have it in your head. And if you write it down somewhere on the computer that's easy to search for, then you won't wonder which of your many, many blank books it lives in. Trust me. So, I might share the, the, the Bible with the Discord folks after the book comes out. Because it's, I mean, I'm hoping it'll be a good reference and something that'll be good to use in the future. A template that would be good to use in the future. But for now, I just got to figure out how to work on it. I was going to hire Numbers Ninja to... I want to get some visuals of the aliens. I'm not a very visual person, so I wanted to know how she would interpret all the aliens. Unfortunately, she's got, well, she's in school, and she's got some tendonitis issues, so I can't throw too much art at her. Did I make any kind of rough map of the ship in six wakes? I don't think I ever wrote it down, but the Chinese version is amazing because it comes with a a map of a sort of well it's not manga because that's Japanese but a, a sort of Southeast Asia art bent to the six characters and then on the other side is their version of what the ship looked like so they've got the map of their what they think the ship looked like on one side and the people on the other and that's downstairs in the stack of stuff to get framed because that is by far the best version of six wakes because it also comes in this little mylar padded envelope so 
you get this padded envelope with a big six on it and you open it up. I should just have it to show you because it is really awesome. I'll try to remember to do that next time. I'll write it down in that notebook. But yeah, it's gorgeous. But I don't think I made an, a map. I might have made a... It sounds so stupid to say it. I might have made a mental map. I knew what, what had to be on what level because I wanted to change the gravity on every level. So... Again, it's important, even if it's only for you. Maps are good. Lists are good. So, on one hand, I understand why you wouldn't do it if you don't know if the, the story's going to sell or not. But on the other hand, I'm just, like, doing the cautionary tale thing of maybe it's better to get in the habit now, if you're a beginning writer, than to do it later when you're at, at book two and realize, instead of writing, you've got to take your writing time and go back and look at book one to find out what everybody looks like. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and end this here for the podcast. So if you are wanting to get in touch with me, you can email me at mightymartgmail.com and you can see the blog and show notes at merverse.com. My socials, Mighty Mer on Twitter, and Twitch, Mighty Mer 2, numeral 2 on Instagram. Don't post a lot, just a warning. If you want to support the show and you can't do it monetarily, think about telling a friend. Would really love to get, <laughs> we were talking about podcasting and promoting and marketing, and people were asking us at, at Boscone, and people were asking us what we were how we found new podcasts and I, I did some thinking and I thought it's pretty much word of mouth. I'll read it or, you know, read it on a blog post or something, but it's, I, I look at who I trust and what they're listening to and then I'll give it a try myself. So if you like this show, consider telling someone about it or you can support via Patreon, patreon.com slash mighty Um, I'm here on Twitch live where we do a, somewhat structured podcast and then we have the official bar con after the podcast ends and we still hang around and talk for a little bit so if you want to participate in that it's absolutely free you just come to twitch.tv slash mighty tuesday thursdays 3 p.m or uh you can listen to it all at patreon.com slash mighty every level gets access to all the exclu exclusive podcasts and the early podcasts or they get the exclusive things early. Made sense in my head. Okay. So next week, or next time, I'm not sure what we'll be talking about. I thought I wrote it down. I did not write it down. So it's a mystery. Absolute mystery topic. But uh, get some work done. I hope you have a really good start to the week. And we'll see you on Thursday. And until then, you should be writing. I Should Be Writing is available to you under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives License. Theme music by John Inilio. Art by Numbers Ninja. Production by Summer Brooks. And hosting by Libsyn. Find all of this information and more at merverse.com. And remember, we can't do this without you. Thanks for your support. Doctor. Yeah, I'm sitting home watching Doctor.